came back to the farm. She's massive, isn't she? That's the radiator for this bud. But we're not ready to put it in yet. I guess it was quite an extensive deal for them to fix it. They almost gave up on it because they were just having a hard time fixing all the leaks, but they think they got them all corrected, so it's a lot cheaper than buying a new one. But with that said, the bud's gonna be on hold for a little more. I know, it's been here a while. Uh, I think we're gonna try to fix the gasket in this front cover plate. It's, it's a huge gasket. It's probably terribly expensive, but a lot of oil leaks out of there. And if we get that fixed, I'd really tighten up a lot of the oil leaks in this engine. So, we're waiting on sourcing gaskets for now. Let's do something different. It's cold outside, it's negative 16 Fahrenheit. I've got an idea that I want to tackle. An old truck that I used to haul grain and I used to haul water with. And uh, well, my brother and I, a couple of years back, that's leg arms, we uh, pulled out the old, oh, was it 305 Chrysler? I don't remember exactly, it wasn't a 360. Something, some old Chrysler engine that was shot and the transmission was, was no good. And we put in a 350 with a used transmission we found and just never finished it. The brakes are bad, brakes don't work, but it runs. And we need that truck because it'd be a great grain truck to hold about 300 bushels when we're cleaning grain or you know have a sample or something or some seed we need moved around and they've just been sitting there for years so it's cold leg arms is busy with his house i think i'm going to try to get that thing up and running so we can actually use it this season now i was just thinking my plan was to grab the case steer and drag it over here but what if i put a battery in it started it's got old gas put a little ether in it negative 16 degrees outside. Is that worth tackling, guys? Should I do that for you guys? Absolutely. Okay, let's load this Can-Am up with some gear and go over there and see if we can get that thing fired up. And if it can't, what a waste of time. We'll grab the case gear, push it back over here. Quick battery check, let's see here. Here's a nice magnet power. And it's a little weaker. Let's try this one. I'm gonna need all the juice I can get. Ooh, that one's nice. Yeah, we're taking this one. You're the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Who's ready for the Arctic? All right, quick. Get out so I can close the door. Don't let all the heat out. I do have a remote for that door. It's actually right there. Why I didn't grab it. I'm gonna bet you guys three live streams that it won't start. Three live streams. Highly unlikely. And there's a big snowdrift, I think, in front of it. So I'm probably gonna get stuck in the process. But it's gonna be worth it. Oh yeah, there's a snowdrift in the way. Uh, let's go around the other side. Can we get through here? Oh no! Oh, I just buried it. Oh no. Oh no, I'm gonna have to get the skid steer. Oh yeah, there's no way. Well, that's good. Parked it right there, nice and perfect. All right, so, <laughs> this is the truck. I think the battery is on this side, in this compartment right here. Oh, else well, so I've opened this up. See here. There we go. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh. oh, I feel stupid when this happens. That battery's toast. All right, let's put the new battery in it before I freeze. Oh, I can't believe we forgot this thing. Oh, it's terrible. It's not a half, it's a 716, really? Or is it just a corroded? No. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, the battery's coming apart. Literally inside. Oh, that is bad. This poor battery. I hope it was an oldie. Oh, no. That just broke off. Walk of shame. 
General Motors engine of shame. Light pathetic jog of shame. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got hands on both now? Yeah, it does. Okay. Just need a simple chain. Real quick, connect, disconnect. Yank the side by side back. And then I may try to drag that truck backwards and bring it over here if I can. We'll see. Open. I could drag it backwards all the way around to the field here, but kind of a drift behind it too. Now I gotta get these tanks out as well. We just kind of put them in there for storage because the truck wasn't going anywhere and well, they don't need to be in there now. Probably should just sell them. Now we got those Enduroplosses that are nice and black. We don't really need these, but let's soak on the bed, make sure it's a neutral, and give her all! That's mission success. Got a little snow to melt off her. I'll brush that off. But it's in. Gotta let things warm up. We'll get back to it in a minute. So uh, I'll be back. For those that may be wondering, <laughs> this is called the rock. It's an old blazer we bought. We thought it'd be fun to fix up and work on it. And well, it, we just never really fixed it up and worked on it. But it had a good 350 in it, and that's winning that truck. And the transmission came out of this old GMC 6000. It had no engine or rear axle or a bunch of stuff, but it had a transmission with a power takeoff, and we're like, that'll work. So they went into that truck. It's getting to work. Let's see. What do we got? I still see snow on it. I guess uh, keeping the shop at 48 degrees isn't enough to melt all the snow out by morning, but that's okay. It's better than what it was. So my job today, first thing I gotta do is I'm gonna look at the brake booster and I'm gonna determine what it is to see if I can get one ordered. So we'll go on the internet, do some searching, call the parts shop, see what it takes to get one here, because that's gonna be a limiting thing. Originally I was thinking about retrofitting a newer one on there from a, a different make and model, but being that there probably is just a direct replacement, it's a lot nicer just to bolt it right up and have it work. So that's what we're gonna go by today. These things are kind of classic looking. There we go, let's see here. All right, so that there, I think is our culprit. 
Let's take a closer look. So what's happened is it's rusted out from the inside and it won't build pressure now. That's definitely the clutch linkage. That's definitely the brake. You can tell too that we got a 350 in here because <laughs> it's distributors hanging out in the floor there. We never finished building a cover around that. I might be able to do that too while we're here. And then I should probably chop the shifter down. We just stuck a rod on there and it's like sky high because that's fun. So, all right, let's get some numbers. Let's start doing some goo searching and get to this. Well, I found a master cylinder I think is the right one. Not a lot of them out there. Uh, it's kind of pricey and it's a ways out if we ordered it now. So we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this old one off though. It's not doing any good on there right now. Uh, and take a closer look at it. Maybe get some measurements and just kind of you never know, I might be able to come across, across something a little closer. I'd like to convert it to a newer system, but the way it's set up, it's uh, kind of complicated. So there's a whole booster, uh, brake booster underneath the cab that uses vacuum off the engine, which is pretty standard, but it's just all very unique and big. And if we remember correctly, it's the plunger in this that's shot and uh, it's rusted out the inside. So it got water in it at some point, moisture, and it won't build pressure anymore. So let's take it off. That was easy. I don't know if there's any fluid in it. We're gonna find out. You can always take the cap off, I suppose. My guess is it's drained all out. Oh yeah, she's bone dry. That's what I figured. And a little rusty. How do you hold the back side of that? Well, Trying to take it off the inside with one person. Fortunately, I've got an old clutch opening here and I might be able to get my hand in. Okay, let's see here. Oh boy. <laughs> Come on, fingers. Come on, fingers. Work today. Oh, oh, I almost got it. There we go. I think I got it. Got it. And. Oh, got it. Perfect. She's a beaut. Yeah, there's the plunger. I think I can come up with something. I've seen a number of units on the internet that look very similar to this for like Fords and other vehicles. And I just, I think I can probably come up with one. So we'll see what we can do here. Let's pull it apart, take a look on the inside, see what she looks like. I doubt I can rebuild it myself, but you never know. Looks like some type of brass machine. I bet that punches out there. Oh, it's coming. There we go. Get all that gooey stuff on there. Almost that there's a spring on that unit. Oh, there's nasty inside there. I don't suppose that's what needs to come out. So here's what's bad is these seals right here then. These are the culprits. Doesn't look terrible, it's just it's gummy and nasty. Kind of like goo out of there. That'd be something else they offered a rebuild kit for these. So I may even do some more looking. See what I come up with. There's my spring. Okay. Hmm. It is nasty in there. There's sludge. If I could somehow hone the inside of this, I might be able to clean that up. Possibly this could be salvaged. It's pretty beat up. This thing needs some new, uh, it's not a carbide, whatever they use for that, but oh, yeah, <laughs> it's all bent. Uh, let's see if I can clean this thing up. It's 
So what I'm doing is this is called a honer. Basically, there's a, it's almost like a, the same material used for sharpening knives. It's kind of like a stone. It's chipped off, chipped off that one, but it's working. Um, and basically, it spins and creates, uh, or it takes a very fine layer of, of material off the inside, as well as creating a pattern of uh, brushes, I don't know what you call it, scratches, up and down. So if there's any grooves or pits or divoting or anything there that might be causing leakage to happen. Anyways, I'm honing it out. You guys get it. I'm no expert. So here's what I'm thinking. I honed on it a bit more, um, and it definitely it cleaned up in there. There's some pitting still, and then on top of that, I just imagine these rubber seals have leaked, and they're, they've shrunken over time. I'm sure. So I did happen to find one on the internet for not a terrible price. So I ordered it. It's gonna be here in a couple weeks. Uh, but I'll put this one back together again since I have all the parts here and put it back in there because it's pretty easy to put in and just put some oil in it and just try it. Um, and then when the new one comes, but at least maybe I get some brakes working for the time being and then let's get the engine started. Let's go with that. Went ahead and got it back on. Dad's in the cab and what we're doing now is we're bleeding the brakes. So I'm in the back. I already cracked one. A bunch of air came out right off the bat, which shows there was a bunch of air already down in the system. So I'm gonna crack the bleeder on this side of the brakes, open it up. He's gonna pump the brakes and we're just gonna push fluid through the system from the reservoir all the way through and try to push out any air that may be in the system. It was kind of nasty oil anyways that was coming through, so I might as well change it anyways. Okay, let me just go ahead and crack it real quick. There we go. Oh, there's air coming out already. Yep, go ahead. It's just spraying now. Oh, is that air up there on that end? What? I thought I heard it suck air up there on the reservoir for a second. I don't think so. Okay. I just did. Just checked all the fluids and they're good. Uh, the oil looked brand new, obviously, because I think it had maybe 20 minutes of time on it since we dropped the engine in her. Yeah, it's working on getting the ground on the battery fixed after that battery itch situation you guys saw earlier. And I just dumped a couple gallons of gas in the tank so it won't be quite as old. Still got some old gas in there, but at least it's blended a little better. So we're getting ready to fire her up here. See if she runs. If she runs, the brakes got pressure. And he presses against, he's got resistance. There's fluid going to all the brake assemblies, brake systems, and no air bubbles are coming out. So by rights, the brakes might be good, but I'm still gonna put that new part on when it comes. And uh, we'll get this thing running, then we'll bring it back in and start all the fine tuning stuff like taking off unnecessary stuff. No, we don't. No need. Let's see if we can start it. Purring on old gas. <laughs> it's a little bit cranky, but that's okay. It's expected. I'm gonna put the PTO in and see if the hoist works a little bit. If it is, we can drop these tanks. And I'm gonna go spin some brodies in this thing and get that fuel out of it. Get some new gas in her. Oh boy, come on, keep going. Running it, I can hear it running yeah, the piece. Is the valve wrong? Do I have it in the wrong position? There it goes. It's going now. And we also need to put some air in the tires too. Oh, the duels in the back. There's some were low or flat, I should say. We'll see if they take air. Well. It's running, just not as good as I'd like. It's running a little rough. 
I think it needs a tuning, as well as some new gas. The gas is really old. It's been in there for a long time, several years. So we're out of time this episode, but the next one, I'm going to take the gas, put some fresh stuff in there, and go rot it around a little bit more and keep working on her and get that truck ready to go for when we need it. One more truck, one more tool, one more thing to drive. It's awesome stuff. So, All right, guys, we'll see you then. God bless. Next episode coming soon. See you there.